That's right. Uh, good. Left the door and the window open. Good afternoon. <laughs> Welcome to our final live stream of 2021. Hello. Hello. It's been a year, hasn't it? What happened to this year? I don't know. <laughs> it's like it's gone. Crazy. Anyway, thank you for all of your lovely Christmas messages. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Baxter said, I, for one, am looking forward to reliving those, reliving those memorable beverage spills of 2021. Now, there's an idea for a game. In slow motion. <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't take... I was going to try and do some, like, best of clips moments, but I just don't have the time, <laughs> quite frankly. But we are going to talk about today the best sellers, some of our accomplishments. We're going to talk about... I mean, you tell us your kind of like highlight moments of 2021. Mm -hmm. um, what's your favorite Nikon moment of 2021? I think I can guess for most. Yeah, people. but mostly it's all about us. Yeah, <laughs> just the way it's going to be. The uh, coffee fund is open. Thank you to everyone who's contributed through PayPal, through the online shop. Uh, Con's got an empty cup ready for his final spill of the year. <laughs> let's not let's not do that. Um, I am coffee and tealess, which is very sad, but I was trying to get everything ready. I've got some infographics. I've, that's what I've spent my wow, time Wow, first time. We are prepared. <laughs> I tried. I tried. Um, so good morning to you all. I also have to say a massive thank you to Austin for sending me a very lovely calendar, which arrived in the post this morning. That's amazing. Yeah. It arrived before Christmas. It yeah, exactly. Very right nice. time. Thank you so, so much for that. Really, really appreciate it. It's absolutely lovely. Um, it's always nice. Uh, Ian also sent me a calendar. Well, it's it's our calendar. It's for both of us. All right. Thank you, Ian. So we can share one month you, one month me. Yeah, exactly. Okay. But it's always lovely to see all your pictures and, and your creativity. So thank you very much for thank that. Thank you. And for your Christmas cards and your general Christmas wishes. We're a jolly lot today, aren't we? Um, Randall very kindly said, yes, please also hit the like button. So if you are watching, please just press that thumbs up. It's really super helpful interestingly enough statistics show that only i think it's only like 12 percent of our viewers are subscribed <laughs> I looked at this oh thing. no <laughs> what's that all about are we going to change it today yes um and we have isn't it a christmas miracle it's a, yeah it would be nice but it's amazing like obviously people pick up our videos on on the channel and they don't hit subscribe is it because they don't like us? <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. Thank you massively to Michael, Thank you, Michael for your contribution to the Coffee Fund. He says, happy Christmas, Becky, Con, and all with thanks for all the many memories you have flooded me with this past year. Nonstop joy. That should be our catchphrase. It's Grace Westminster live stream. Non-stop non joy. I love it. Uh, and thank you, Ian, for your contribution to the Coffee Fund. Thank you. We will be partaking for sure after the show. Um, I'm going to have to reread these comments. Whenever I'm feeling blue or I get a, a nasty comment, I'm going to come back and reread the chat because everyone's just so lovely. That's true. I mean, you always get 1% of the nasty ones, but 99% yeah. of them are really, really are very nice. nice. Exactly. Exactly. So uh, let me think. I have... What do yeah. I have first? Yeah, you're going to start us off with what? With I'm sales gonna, or gonna, channel? No, I'm going to do the channel statistics okay. first and we'll have a little chat about this. So let's hope that this works. Yes, it Ooh, works. I like your PowerPoint skills. <laughs> Thank you. Look at that. Grace Westwood's a year in the view. I could have animated it, but that was a bit much. Okay. So did you use PowerPoint or Paint, Microsoft Paint? <laughs> I used Microsoft Paint. No, okay. I <laughs> so first of all, YouTube stats for you. So we are now as a total mm -hmm. at 2 million views on the channel. Wow. 2 million. That's pretty good. That's obviously in the history of our channel. And we hit 11.2k subscribers as of the day before yesterday when I started this. That's really nice. Creativity. And in total, we posted 277 videos on our channel. That's since the beginning. Yeah. Since, okay. In the history of time. All right. But I will say, and I'm just going to go back to us for a second here. Okay. So... The first few years, I think our channel actually officially started in 2014, and we only had two videos up. Yes. For several years. Yeah, it was six mil. Yes. And then which is our it was our highest viewed yeah. video of all time. And it was Felix Kuhn's video, right? So. Uh, it was the introduction to Grace. Okay. He's okay. in that video. He's in that video. Yes. Okay. 
Felix can, those of you that don't know, is a portrait and lifestyle photographer who now resides in New York and apprenticed under Annie Leibovitz. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so anyway, that's those were our two videos. And then a couple of years ago, we started to do some how-tos and, you know, little bits and pieces. Very low production budget. <laughs> Me sitting at my desk downstairs. Uh, and so... But in the last year, and this is the interesting thing, in 2021, do you like right. the balloon? Oh, yes. We have uploaded 132 videos. Okay, so 277 for the whole, like history. since the beginning, for the whole history, right? 132. That's basically almost half of all the videos we put out. Yeah, exactly. So uh, we've been very, very busy. Obviously, throughout the year, we've had a live stream almost every week and mm -hmm. a podcast almost every week. Yeah. So at least about a hundred of those videos have been those two, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the Nikon report and the live stream. And then we've interspersed them with other. Yeah. Things. Roughly 50, 50. Yeah. Because we're on 48 Nikon reports and then I'm sure we are like on hundred live streams already. Probably. I actually yeah. haven't done that. Those statistics. Because yet. at the beginning you were doing them almost every day, right? <sighs> yeah. I was doing, I was doing them every day for the first couple of weeks and then I realized I also had to homeschool my children. <laughs> uh, you've, you you realized a couple of weeks later. Oh, okay, I, I have actually have to do other things. I have children mm -hmm. to teach. Yeah, okay. exactly. So then it became uh, twice a week. Okay. And then when we came back and we opened up, it was once a week. So there we go. And the rest, as they say, is history. Thank you very much, Roy, for your contribution to the Coffee Fund Thank as you, well. Roy. Very much appreciated. Um, okay, so that was the... Um, the sort of numbers. We also mm -hmm. did 7,185 subscribers and counting, but so far this year. This so year, 7,000. That's oh, really good. So remember so at the end of last year, we yeah. were at 4K. So more than half of our subscribers we've done this year. Yeah. Yay us. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you Seriously. It's like, I think the word of mouth and the support that we've had and the kind of community that we've created has just uh, made it all worth it. It's a lot of work, but it's made it very, very much worth very much worth it so so when we hit that million <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i'm gonna have grandkids yeah probably yeah. if we work, work at the same rate but you know i think with all these things the thing with youtube and with actually any social media or anything like that is it's a consistency thing so if we yeah. were to vanish then off for a couple of months and then come back we'd have to kind of build back up again that's right and then what they say as well is if you do it uh, consistently then it snowballs at some point yeah yeah so hopefully yeah we're waiting for that exactly i like this question from liam before we yes we're very in christmasy jumpers martin it's like full-on christmas jumper day today uh or christmas christmas <laughs> christmas <laughs> Yeah. That was unintentional. Christmas sweater was what I was going to say. Uh, Christmas. I thought you're going to ask. So you're going to be going to have some quiz for them. Qui no, no quizzes. No. Um, but Liam said, "Such a class job, too, guys. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Any plans you can share with us for next year? I mean, goodness, so yeah. many plans. We have a great video planned for the first week of January, yeah, which is top secret, um, but very, very exciting. I'm really looking forward yeah. to that." And I think it's going to be about 100 videos about Z9. So yeah. that's going to be that. you got to ride the wave, you know, <laughs> the hype wave. I uh, think um, also, I mean, the, the biggest thing for the shop itself is going to be the Z9 and the new releases and just getting those into the hands of people because that is going to be the tricky thing. I really, I am not looking forward to the next yeah. few months. Fighting for allocation. Yes, it's... Um, it's already looking like it's going to be very interesting. Roy said that um, it looks like in the Australia, it's going to be delivered from the 24th. Now, our issue is that a lot of Europe celebrates Christmas on the 24th. So that delivery date of the 24th is not very helpful. <laughs> That's true. You can still get a train on 24th, but uh, yeah, because Christmas Eve, right? So Because you can hear, yeah. Yeah, you can hear, but then on 25th is dead, basically. Yeah. So if they ship everything on 24th, then you're not going to get it that probably until after the... Uh, Boxing Day because Boxing Day is still bank holiday, right? So yeah, well, we actually have a double whammy because we've got Christmas on Saturday, Boxing Day Sunday, and then we've mm. got a bank holiday Monday and Tuesday. Mm. So Wednesday. Anyway, it's going to be very, very interesting. If you have pre-ordered yeah. a Z9, please just be very patient with us. We are not 
Uh, <laughs> we're it's not, not about us, it's all about the Z9, as we're usual. We're not so. made of steel, unfortunately, and uh, it's, uh, it's very tough to deal with uh, all the inquiries because we want to get them into your hands, we just don't That's know right. how. But you see, we, we were right as well with states because we were, we were saying that uh, we feel like it's going to sleep in states, and then it didn't sleep onto the 15th. No, it well, didn't, so and B&H yeah. d just removed that 15th delivery day, and then On the 15th. coming soon. I was yeah. like... Ah. Stay tuned. Mm, exactly. Um, Israel, thank you very much. Happy holidays to you as thank well. Thank you very much. Says, Thanks for all the great content. Live streams are always entertaining. Well, we do try and entertain in amongst whatever else we're doing. Um, Flickr Chani UK, I think that's right. Or Chani UK, I'm not sure. So mm -hmm. congratulations to everyone at Grays. Well done and well deserved. Thank you for all the great thank content. Thank you very much. As well as a brilliant customer service. You make buying from Grays a very enjoyable experience. Well, thank you very much indeed. Um, and thank you to Terry for your contribution to the Coffee Fund and for your lovely thank comments you, also Terry. on my Instagram pictures, which I always appreciate. Mm. <laughs> a lot of people are very, very positive. It doesn't matter what I post up there. I saw a picture of Terry sitting in the pub mm. celebrating Christmas on Instagram. Mm. There you go. We're all like, it's a community. That's exactly. what it is. Yeah, well, it's a Nikonona group. That's right. Nikonona yes. group, they celebrated their stuff. That's right. That was when? A couple of days ago? Yeah, I think it... Well, was it yesterday? No, the day before. I'm not sure, but okay. yes. The different groups did different days. Nice, well. okay. Uh, James says, is there any difference between the Nikon Z28 and the 28mm SE, which is the special edition? The casing, that's all. Cosmetic. Purely cosmetic, exactly. Um, and a £50 difference in price, in true. UK at least. It's true. Uh, and David uh, points out that we then have the Orthodox Christmas celebration in January, which, you know, you know all about that. Yes, that's exactly. Right. See, my Christmas starts, well, it's, it's already here because we start a week before Christmas. So yes. It's already here and then it's New Year. And then it's Orthodox Christmas. And then it's old New Year. Yeah. So basically, I'm going to be out for a month. <laughs> it's just going to yeah. be gone. <laughs> Where's gone? Uh, he's going to come back uh, a month point. later yeah. with a tail behind his legs. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. um, Ed said, cheers for the next 100K subscribers in 2022. Yes, to the moon. <laughs> yes, wait for us being sponsored by Skillshare. Yeah, exactly. And thank you so much to Vince for your contribution. Thank to the you, Vince. Amazing. Thank you so, so much. I uh, hope you also have a wonderful Christmas. And to Gary, I'm not going to do the infographics. Thanks, Gary. We're just going to read out the cards. That's right. <laughs> this is just a self-esteem boost for just, me. Just, you know, <laughs> just, just keep going, Becky. Yeah, keep going. exactly. Um, but as, sorry, that sometimes the comments just bloop disappear and then I have to find where I was. Uh, so thank you, Gary, also yeah. for your contribution. Randall said the first 10K subscribers are hard to reach, but it will take off after then. So we've we've hit the hardest hurdle and we've managed to get over it. So now we're... We're going to build up. That's right. Wait for us advertising some chairs, some, I don't know, light bulbs. Is that what? I don't know. <laughs> some cryptocurrencies. Very exciting. You name it, you know. <laughs> um, oh, my goodness. Okay. Now, let's... Should I go back to my info? No, I haven't. I found Jeff also contributed to the coffee. Thank fund. you, Jeff. Thank you so much. Very, very much appreciated. It was yesterday, Con, that Terry said oh, they went right. to the okay. Fuller's Brewery to sample the delights and have a lovely Ooh, day. Ooh, Fulham's Brewery. There nice. Nice. <laughs> Where's Fulham Breweries nowadays? It used to be in Brick Lane, right? And then is it now in East London somewhere? I don't know. Because there's one of them is in between uh, like Acton and... Uh, Okay. Acton and Ealing, I know, because I used to drive past it, but I can't remember which I think one. that one possibly is uh, near Stratford, because there's a canal there with the stadium, the Olympic Stadium. Oh, so there's a brewery there, but I could be wrong as well. Very nice. All right, we're going to go back to my infographic, because I worked so hard on this. Is that okay? <laughs> nah. <laughs> so, All right, what's up next? So top videos of 2021, believe it or not, how to check your camera's shutter count was the top video. Now, weirdly, this video came out last, uh, I think the year before. Is it 2020 or 2019? It's one of those, right? Yeah, yeah, it was an early video, but it was the most viewed video of 2021. The production values are <laughs> awful. Like, terrible, oh, I know. And the second one is the, the ZFC. Okay, the, the, yeah, that's the beanies that sells it, I think. I think that was yeah. it. It was the Brilliant hipster idea. video, I know. But a stroke of genius. Um, and then the Z9 teaser. Oh, right. The first teaser got people really excited. The one that used M O M G on the title. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah you, so basically the... Um, the moral of the story is just to use like slang and the cool kid lingo. That's right. 
<laughs> which I'm obviously not one of the cool kids. Well, I want to use XOXO as well at the end, but yeah. then I change it. Oh, you know, you and I misspelled it. it actually, and no one noticed. You should have gone for it. So next up, we have countries we've been most viewed in. You might be quite interested to. All right, let me guess. See what this is. Okay, so we have UK and we have United States. Yeah, but USA is USA first. exactly. Okay. USA is number one. Then the UK is number two, mm. and then third is Canada. It's our right. friends over All in right. Canada. All right, the UK, you're slacking. Yeah. Behind. <laughs> What's going on? Considerably smaller country than No, 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 no. Don't throw stats at me, <laughs> you know, especially the correct ones. And then sort of almost joint fourth and fifth place were India and Germany. No Russia. Not Russia. Okay. Your mum has not watched enough of She's our videos. She's been clicking at least 50 times, refreshing, <laughs> you know, so... So that was the um, the YouTube stats. Those were the kind of like most notable stats, mm -hmm, I would say. Mm -hmm. Then we have a lovely picture of the shop. Okay. We have the awards that All we right. won. All right, the shop's got some awards. We got some awards. Okay. So first up, we won for the fifth year running the Amateur Photographer Platinum Good Service Award. Okay. Yay. Um, this is actually the seventh year we've won a Good Service Award, but the fifth, I think it was the seventh, but the fifth year that we've won the Platinum, which mm. was, Yeah. Which was nice. That's pretty good. Uh, yeah. And then we also won the uh, British Photographic Industry News Retailer of the Year Award, which was very nice. That was a little bit earlier on this year. Um, just as a little reminder, because obviously we're not going to be able to bombard you with reminders about it mm. over Christmas because we won't yeah. be here. There's a still world going on. Yeah, there's still awards to be won so we've been nominated for again the good service award with amateur photographer i know a lot of you have already voted and thank you very much for that um i know because you told me <laughs> that's how i know i don't know where the voting stands um i have put the links in the description box so if you get a chance and you haven't voted and you'd like to please do the other one mm -hmm. is the photography news it's uh, I mean, we've been nominated for uh, Retailer of the Year in that mm -hmm. one. But you can vote for us in both new and secondhand categories, but it's just a general survey as well of your favorite. You can vote for your favorite micro four thirds system. You can vote for your favorite overall lens. The best you can use podcast in the world. You can't vote for that, actually. Damn it. We should win some kind of podcast awards or something. That's right. Yeah, yeah we should do that. Very niche, though. <laughs> very, very niche. And those five people that listen to it, they love it. <laughs> Which is great. Um, and thank you. If you do listen to our podcast, rather than watching on YouTube, it's also very much appreciated. So... That was, um, those were the two awards that we won last year. And if you would like to do any voting, then as I say, the descriptions, uh, the description box has the links in it. Right. Very much appreciated. Oh, right. Uh, yeah. And Terry says it's actually in Cheesic. Okay. It's uh, a yeah, Fuller's what Brewery. I'm thinking Truman's Brewery. Yeah. And the old Truman Brewery was in Brick Lane and then they moved it to one it's year's right, traffic somewhere. We went somewhere. to the yeah. coffee okay. festival and that was in the old Truman Brewery. That's right. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Makes mm -hmm. sense now. Remember these things now. Okay, good. We also have quite a fun film photography uh, vlog, which mm. is coming out on, I think it's New Year's. Yeah, the one we filmed over the years. Yeah, it like took us month. about six months to film that and then finish it. So hope you appreciate it and edit it. <laughs> yeah, enjoy the audio quality there. <laughs> oh, that was so tough. Oh, dear. Anyway, uh, thank you, Richard, for your contribution to the you. coffee fund and to George, the snoring bulldog as well. Very, very much appreciated uh, that someone was asking if Fuller's still bring a horse drawn carriage to deliver. See, my old kickboxing instructor works yeah. at the Fuller's brewery. Yeah, or in his spare did. time. Yeah, no, that was his like day job was working at the brewery. <laughs> Lifting the, you know, the bags with wheat and everything, yeah. you know. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, that's why I thought. Another that Harris delivers with a horse carriage, right? We saw it a couple of times. Yes, I don't know if they still do, but they they have done that. So yeah. someone lost, yeah. You probably have to pay extra for yeah. it though, to be honest. Okay, good. So we've done. I'm just keeping. Should we talk about some bestsellers? Yeah, yeah. What 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 sold the most? Okay, I thought I would start small. Okay. And work our way up. So what do we, what are we going to start with accessories? Uh, yes, we are. But first I have to say thank you to Kale. Kale Cumberland for your contribution to the Coffee Fund. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. I'm trying to make sure I don't miss anyone because what happens yeah. is sometimes the screen goes bloop and then I miss it. Did you, did you mention Richard? I did because it's and George. Thank you, Richard. Snoring oh, bulldog. Perfect. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. <laughs> you forgot the bulldog. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So we're going to start small. We're going to go accessories first because I want to build up to the exciting ones. All right. What do you think 
was the most sold accessory at Grace. So it means stop that. selling. So we did. For, I'm doing third place now. Third place okay. was well, no, no, no. Oh, do no, the I'm suspense. Sorry. Let's wait for thirty seconds. Come on, put your comments below. It's <laughs> You know, let's, let's build it up a little bit. For the accessories? Yes. Okay, fine. Well, we, we have to practice it first, and then we're going to go for the best-selling cameras, then it's going to be like yeah. hundreds of comments. Yeah, you know, the, so. the cameras is going to be exciting. Exactly. So what is the best-selling accessory at Grace of Westminster for the year of 2021? Well. So far? So far, no one's made a guess, so. I'm really bad in saying them. <laughs> I just didn't get them to say Can it be MC at the weddings from now on? Yeah. Yeah, yeah stick to the bar mitzvahs and the, you know. <laughs> That's, you know, we, yeah, we, we do Angel bar mitzvahs party. and weddings and uh, Available for hire. kids' birthdays as well. <gasps> oh, so, you know. Goodness. Okay, so. Um, well, channel got to stay profitable somehow, <laughs> you know. So. <laughs> yeah, we definitely invest more than we make, I think. Horse drawn cart, Hook Norton in Oxfordshire. Ooh. Ooh, sounds posh. It is posh. Uh, Taddy said the FTZ. It was actually okay, close. Okay, it says FTZ, okay. But it didn't, nah, but it didn't make it into the top three spots, interestingly enough. I think because when I was, when we were looking at the stats, uh, we being me, looking at the stats, uh, FTZs were often bought in kits with things, so we couldn't really count it as an individual mm. stock code. That would be like really, really hard to do. So individual accessory, we had a, a joint first place, DK19 and MBD18. Wow, okay. Which is slightly odd and maybe a bit niche, but there you go. So DK19, for those of you that don't know, is the rubber eye cup for yeah. all professional bodies. That's true. But what surprised me that MBD18, which is an expensive accessory to have, actually, you know, mm -hmm. sold really well. Yeah, and it wasn't like a speed light or anything like that. The speed lights actually came came quite far down that list, interestingly enough. But it also tells me that if Z8 comes out mm. with a battery pack, mm. they're going to sell a lot of them because mm. it's nice to have a camera without battery pack for regular use and then add the battery pack when you need to. So it's really good to have that flexibility. Well, I personally um, had MBD18 at the time. When so. you were using the D850? Exactly. Right. Okay, good. Um, second place, it's funny because uh, someone's already guessed second place correctly. So second place was, surprise, surprise, the e 25. Oh. Which, as quality chap, I think well, that's that what it says, chap, says yeah. the Z50 battery that is invisible. Yes. It was so popular, it was out of stock all the time. Still is, still is. Not because Nikon didn't produce it, not because it was so popular. I don't know about that. Let's um, spin it this way. And then in top place, no surprise if the Enel 25 came in second place. Top place was actually the Enel 15. Ta -da. It was the Enel 15C, but the Bs and the As actually came. Right, I added them all together in the end because A, it, Bs, and Cs. Yes, yeah, A, B, and C. So all the Enel 15. So spare batteries just goes to show us at GOW that. You want your spare batteries, and that makes total sense. Yeah, it's just for the peace of mind, mostly, mm -hmm. because, yeah, it's always good to have a spare one in the pocket just in case of the first one dies. And a lot of people now are, well, if they can still travel, are going to the places which are quite cold, mm -hmm. and the battery drains a lot faster in the cold environment. So then you definitely want to have maybe three batteries on a day just to be on the safe side again. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Thank you to Joe for your contribution to Thank the you, as well. Thank you so much for that. Really appreciated. Uh, right. And then I also did some non-Nikon accessories. Oh. Top non-Nikon accessories in first, second and third place. Memory cards. Okay, memory well, cards. makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, and it was these particular memory cards. So interestingly enough, the um, the Lexar CF Express was top, but then only two less was the Delkin Black. So then, and then Richie said that Delkin Black is the best camera for Z9, and then memory card. Yeah, Z9. Yeah, and then we basically in yeah. that month we've sold more Delkin Black cards than any other cards. Yeah. Wow. Crazy. Incredible. Um, almost. And then we've got the uh, 64 gig Sony XQD. So for those who are wants a slightly cheaper option, want to play it safe with slightly smaller memory cards. I know, for example, that um, Simon Stafford recommends 64 gig cards because he doesn't like to put too many, you know, he doesn't like to put too many pictures on one card. I personally always go with like a 120 yeah. or 128. Gig. I, you know, I personally, okay, let's, let's, let's kind of, you know, what do you Steer do? the boat a little bit. Yeah. yeah, I personally think that this mentality of having more smaller cars than bigger cars, this is some popular opinion on the internet. <laughs> I, now, nowadays, it doesn't really matter because the quality control over the memory cards, especially if you're buying really good, reliable brands, 
is really good. So it's very unlikely that your card will fail. And especially looking at specifically XQD and CF Express cards, the uh, failure rate is very small. Now, I'm sure that a lot of people are going to write in the comments, and the, I know what comments are coming, with you. Yeah. but this is my unpopular opinion. So I do tend to go for larger cards personally. It's totally fine. I stick with, yeah, I mean, I often had 32 as my stable thing, and then 32s are becoming not big enough for so many files. Especially for video work. If you're shooting videos, then 32 is basically useless. Um, yeah. And then the 64 gigs are good, but now that we've got 120 or 128 as the kind of standard, yeah. I, I tend to use those, so there yeah. we go. I'm so glad we upgraded our shop's memory card to 120 Lexa card, Yeah. because before we used to have five 32 gigs, and one podcast will take like three or four cards straight yeah, away. Yeah, exactly. So it is painful if you're shooting video stills. You can probably get away with it. Um, acronym Photography says, quick question, is there a case or little pouch that will fit the Eniel 18D? I mean, I know that Think Tank do these... Um, they make them, yeah. They do battery pouches. Uh, I can't remember the name of them, because the, the ones for the memory cards are called like pixel pocket rocket yeah and then i think the ones for the batteries are called just put battery b battery case on the on their website it will yeah. come up yeah um if you've got a 3d printer you can print them out as well i mean there's one or two people like me that, that have uh, a 3d printer. yeah yeah no, there's so many designs they're freely one. available so you know all you need is <laughs> a roll of plastic and a time yeah uh, just to answer joe's question because sorry i was looking at his coffee fund contribution from your screen not mine because mm -hmm. i had the other stuff he said will there be a digital f4s i mean I suppose an F4S being a pro flagship body, the digital version of that is the D6. I mean, what else is there? Mm, or Z8 could be... Potentially. Potentially the size, you know. But technically, yeah, D6, basically the flagships. Yeah, the because flagships would be it, I think. Because F4, if actually a 5 replaced a 4, mm. and a 5 and the more, you know, and the flagship that came after that are that size. Yeah. So if actually they increased it in size, effectively. So. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Uh, Nigel said he had a Duff Sony. Uh, it would have been an XQD G series because Sony don't do CF Express, to mm. my knowledge. Uh, and that it would affect random pictures, that it wouldn't transfer them to a computer. It's interesting. Dell can do a lifetime warranty. I believe Lexar do at least 10 years or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, Sony, I believe, are also 10 years. So they tend to have these longer guarantees. I like it when companies have a lifetime guarantee or mm. a really extended time period because I feel like, a bit like peak design, you know, they have a lifetime guarantee on yeah. their product. So if anything goes wrong, you've always got a, a point to, of contact where you can go back to. I, and I think that kind of shows that the manufacturer really believes in their product. Absolutely, the confidence in their products, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Um, Nick says 128 gig is a happy medium. Some people were Agree. saying, you know, 64 gig, or I prefer smaller ones. That's that's completely fair 64 enough. is bare minimum no nowadays, if you u using more or less recent cameras. Yeah. I guess with Z6, you can get away with 32s, but if you add 4K video on top of it, then it's definitely no. Yeah, exactly. Sophia asked if there'll be a, a, a D7. I don't think so, Sophia. I think that we're probably going to be going like mirrorless flagship from now on. The D6 was an amazing flagship DSLR body, but the Z9 already kind of tops it in a lot of cases. So I don't think we'll see a flagship DSLR again. I have a follow-up question for you. Are we going to see D880? I don't think so. No. This is me. I'm a naysayer. I know that's terrible because I love the D850, but, mm -hmm. but I, I don't. I don't think so. And I know it's going to upset a lot of people. Are we I just going to upset everyone today? <laughs> Let's stir the pot. No, we're going to leave it for the podcast. That's where we normally <laughs> do all of the stuff. So you, know. you do all the controversial stuff, yes. and I like to try and keep people happy. That's right. We're going to talk more about 28 to 75 Yeah. on the next podcast. Is it 24 to 70? 28, 28 to 25. 28 to 75. Yeah. Yeah. But did you put a typo of 28 to 70? I put 28 to 70 because it's muscle memory. It's, you know, yeah. you, I, 20... <laughs> Se like 75 is just so feels weird to time so not Nikon you know. right exactly <laughs> exactly uh, anyway so that was our accessory so next up I'm gonna do Z lenses Z lenses okay that would be quite interesting all right no hold on suspense uh -huh. Okay, what, suspense. What do you think was the best selling that lens at Grace of Westminster? I'd actually be really interested to know because the results surprised me. I when I was going through, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I can see that, I can see that. And then I started to try and sort it by mm -hmm. you know quantity and stuff. And I was so surprised at what the top seller was. So it was like a sleeper hit, as you call it. Yeah. yeah. 
yeah, All exactly. Right. So what do you think was the top Z lens for us? And obviously this is for us, this is not for other dealers or for Nikon in general. Um, but for the G the GOW clientele, let's mm -hmm. say, what was the top selling lens? What did Before I told you what it was, what did you think it was going to be? Well, I thought it would be, hmm. <laughs> uh, I mean, technically, if we if you split it into like bundles, then yeah. probably 2470 f4. But because 2470 f4 is sold a lot with bundles, we, we don't really count as a separate unit. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, I you know I thought maybe it would be something like um, you know twenty four seventy two point eight or something, but yeah. Okay, I'm I'm looking at the responses and I'm fifty one a twenty one a twenty four seventy a four. Okay, you were right. <laughs> oh, who is right then? <laughs> I'm not going to say who gets a candy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, let me show you. So best lenses. We're going to go third place first. So in third place we had da da seventy two hundred two point eight z. Yeah, which uh, doesn't surprise me. We've sold a lot of those. It is a an amazing lens. And I think for, although a lot of people would be happy to adapt their G or E yeah. lens and put it on their Z camera, this this one kind of just is that bit better. Yeah, and it's a must have for a lot of professional photographers. Yeah, exactly. So that was in third place. Now in second place, it surprised me. It's the 14 to 30. Affordable wide angle. Mm, which... Is again, it's kind of an interesting one because this isn't necessarily a staple lens for people. Mm -hmm. This is, but it's a nice to have. Yeah, I think a lot of people got 24 4 as a bundle yeah. with a camera. And then generally people decide do you want to go longer or do you want to go wider? And because the, on the longer end, actually, there's not much options, only 7202.8. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are not, let's say, don't want to carry heavy lens. Yeah. So they thought, well, let me go for wide angle side of things. And again, you got there, you got 1424 and 1430. And I guess 1430, because it's got such positive reviews that a lot of people say, well, look, yes, 1424 is better, but it's not a much, much better than, than yeah. 1430. So for a lot of people, 1430 made sense. And also it's small and light. Yes. But let's see what came in first place. Mm. It was... Da -da! Ah. the 24 to 200 all right so points to steve and vince yeah. for is them. that because i reviewed it is that what it is <laughs> that's what it was okay that's i want my commission on that i was <laughs> um i was really really impressed actually with with that being the top place because it's such a kind of all-rounder it's a lens for everyone yeah and i liked that i was like wow we just that's great <laughs> that's true that's true <laughs> and happy. Like, I normally don't use lenses like this. No, I know. Because I'm a bit snobbish. And I like the expensive glass and primes and, you know, 2.8. But when I reviewed that lens and I compared it to F-mount version, like 28-300, it outperformed it. Mm -hmm. And it also was smaller and lighter. I was really surprised by it. And because it was just a tiny bit taller than 24-70-4, so they were quite comparable in size. Yeah. If you haven't bought 2470, let's say, with a camera, then it just made sense to buy 24200 instead. Yeah, for sure. And that's why it's so interesting that we now have like five lenses that start in that 24 range. Yeah. Is it five or is it more? 2470, 2450, 24120, 2472.8. Yes. 28 to 75. Keep going. Did I say 24 to 50? I think I no. Did. Oh. Anyway, it's a lot of lenses in that range. So, yeah. I'm, I am still confused about the 2875, but I am 75. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I was really impressed at the comments on our video yes. about that lens. That's I was true. delighted to see how many of you thought, well, actually, that's a lens that I would get. Okay, fine. We we understand the, the Tamron Association now. And we've seen that, uh, that that has happened in this instance. That's true. And we're going to talk about it on your report. So we got more information out as well. So but it's still nothing confirmed yet. But I think now we understand a little bit more what went in the process behind it. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, James says the 14 to 30 F4 is a superb lens for landscape. It's as sharp as a Swiss Army knife. Which is great. We um, actually, there's another video that's taken us several months. We haven't finished that one yet. The review of the 14 to 30. Oh, God. Record. Okay, yes. So yeah. We're going to do that at some point. You <laughs> might refilm it Things completely. Things in store for next year. <laughs> we might have to refilm it from the beginning. Um, do it when we get a Z9. That's true. We're <laughs> going to shoot we every. Yeah, for. we're going to shoot everything on Z9 from now on. Exactly. Um, so anyway, I thought that was pretty cool. Sophia said, "I think Nikon copyrighted D numbers up to the D9. It's entirely possible that they put like a little, you know, thing. But uh, at the same time, they also make patents for things that are just yeah. never." I mean, were you happen. saying they can still ride the wave of D, D6, D7, D8, D9 for another like 15 years? I don't know. 
No, I'm just saying that, that I'm... No, I was <laughs> not saying that necessarily. <laughs> I don't think that that would happen. I think... Is that the sign? Cost-wise, yeah. it doesn't make sense. Sales-wise, it's not going to make sense. No. Anymore. You know, we, we love DSLRs, but, uh, um, you know... We're not we don't run a business. We, exactly. And you yeah. don't, like, you know... Well, we un are, unfortunately, every... You know, the company has decided that's, that's the way it is. Yeah. And... We, we, you know, whatever we say doesn't matter. Yeah. That's the thing. Exactly. But whatever we want, ultimately, Nikon are going to do what's the best business sense in their minds for, for their exactly. target audience. Exactly. And the D6, as I think I've said many times, it came out at, at the worst time possible for a flagship body. It came out right before all major sporting events yes. and wildlife travel was cancelled for the following two years. That's true. So it was a difficult one to kind of make anything back on, I would say. If if I was designing a camera that cost me several thousand pounds to make and then I sold half the units I thought I was gonna sell, that would be quite painful. So I don't I don't foresee a D seven happening or a D eight or a D nine for that matter. But I think that Z is the way to go just based on the technology that they're putting in these things. Well now with Z nine and what we see what technology is in it, I absolutely agree with you. Yeah. And you know me in D eight fifty thing and where I was saying that I prefer D eight fifty for commercial work. Yeah. Now it would be Z nine. Yeah. Exactly. Now, interesting enough, Dave, the 105 macro, because you put the 105 macro, I actually thought that was the top selling. We sold a lot of 105 macros. Mm -hmm. I don't think we've supplied them all yet because we haven't had wow. that many. Well, they are popular. I think if you're looking at macro lenses, 105 is the most popular macro, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah, and it's a beautiful lens. I mean, I've seen some amazing shots um, from, from some of you actually sending those over to me uh, straight into my inbox of what you've achieved with that lens. Uh, but it didn't quite make the, wasn't, quite as many as the 70 to 200 and the 14 to 30, but it's a, it is a definitely a top seller. Um, ah, Fred was late, said apologies, and gave us $20. Thank you so much thank for you. your contribution to the Coffee Fund. And thank you to Brian for your contribution to the Coffee Fund. Thank you. <laughs> he said, for the winners of the Cool Kids Podcast Award. That's, that's for me. <laughs> for the Quality Fund, Sheer Entertainment, and the Occasional Spillage. So will you be spilling more things in the new year? Well, I already spilled something the other week. Like didn't I? twice in the course of a week, because there was my bottle of water on the desk. There was the water. Oh, here. and I and and the, the one of the lights fall down on the table. That's right. Yeah. That was off the record. Went so yeah. well. Um, but anyway, there we go. <laughs> Enough about spillages. Butter fingers. <laughs> so that was the Z lenses. Now next up we have F lenses. Okay. Which is a you know, there are still people buying F lenses, I would like to point out. And these ones are very interesting. All right. So, ready? yes, yes. Yeah. Shall we? Shall we? we okay. Shall. Drum roll. <laughs> That's a good drum roll. Okay. So, in third place, we have the Nifty 50. Nice. 1.8G. I was not unsurprised by this one. At the same time, yeah. I was like, oh, it was a top set. Oh, okay. That's a classic, isn't it? So yeah. you, it's like it's from back old days where you would buy your film camera and you get a 50 to go with it, isn't it? Yeah, so. and obviously so many people just went, I need a 50 to go on my camera. Yeah. And the 518G is is so good and yeah. it's better than the 1.4G in a lot of cases. Yeah, and reasonably priced as well. Yeah, exactly. And like half the cost. In second place, my favorite... The 500, oh, I'm giving you a sneak peek there. <laughs> it's a big lens at the bottom. So it's 500 PF is the second best selling lens. Yeah, second it's, best selling it's lens. It's not the lens I would expect to sell in such high volume. It was all me. You know how I just like blathered on about it through the whole of lockdown, through, uh, yeah. anyway, it was my go-to lens because I was like, I, I can't take the same pictures of the same field yeah. every day. So what I lens are we going to talk about next year? 58, not 0.95? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, every week? Uh, no, I'm not taking full credit for you all buying 500 PFs, but it, it is a beautiful lens, and I know that I've talked about it enough, and I know some people said, okay, I'm going to get one because of that. But it it's a, it's a great lens. It's very specific mm -hmm. in its you know, in its purpose. Mm -hmm. It's not a carry anywhere lens at all. No, but it's much lighter compared to a full version. Though. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes it is. And quality wise, it's fantastic. Okay, well, if you have to carry, say, 200 to 500 or 500 PF, then you would go with 500 PF, yeah? Yeah, I personally would. Yeah, exactly. Because size and weight is about the same. Yeah, 500 PF is a little bit lighter, in fact. Here we go. Okay, so in first place, this one did surprise me. Mm -hmm. Speaking of, the devil... Doesn't even fit on the 200 screen. Two hundred to five hundred. Two hundred to five hundred. I didn't try and make that smaller, so it, fit, it just fits on the screen. <laughs> it's 
try it one more time. There Here we go. go. Here we go. <laughs> it's a big lens. Yeah. So that was our top selling lens for the year, which is fascinating, actually. The, the 500 PF took the top spot and the 200 to 500 took the second spot. The, sorry, the other way around. So uh, the, the, that was the right decision for Nikon to release this lens because before the release of that lens, we had 70 to 100 and we got 80 to 400 and nothing longer without spending too much money. Yeah. So there was a niche there which was fulfilled by Sigma 150 to 500 or, 150 six or 600. Yeah. So it was a good financial decision for them to design this lens. And obviously the lens is very good. It's very attractively priced and it covers that niche. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Nick said we'd like the 500 PFZ version. Yes. So now that we know that the 800 mil is going to be a PF lens, um, and we didn't talk about that much because the slightly weird thing was that we had... We film our, our podcasts on a Monday and quite often releases and stuff happen on a Tuesday or a Wednesday. So if we don't have the information a few hours ahead of time, then it misses out on the podcast completely. So we had this like kind of brief discussion about the 800 mil. But the fact they put the PF, so phase Fresnel, that's what it's called, phase Fresnel glass, and that means that the lens is going to be extremely lightweight. I know that uh, Woody sent an email with mm -hmm. some deductions on yeah. how much he thinks it's going to weigh and size-wise and things like that. And kind of, although Nikon have put a product picture there, they've said, you know, pr final product may change. Mm. <laughs> but full disclaimer, it might not look the way that they've said it's going to look. But I think PF is the way to go with Z cameras. They've yeah. proven that it's good it's, you know, it's more than adequate with the 300 and with the 500. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people say, well, why are the lenses so big? They're supposed to be smaller. But actually, let's say, a good example of this is 2472 mm. If you add FTZ to 2472.8, especially the VR version, it's much, much larger compared to 2470 native Z lens 2.8. Yeah. So, you know, the lenses are getting smaller, and that's to do with the mount and the distance between the rear element and the, you know, the sensor of the camera as well. Exactly. And then if you've got a lighter camera, obviously the Z9 is a tricky one because it's a flagship body and it is slightly lighter than the D6 by about five grams, I think. Yeah, like Nikon says it's 20% smaller than D6. It didn't feel 20% smaller, though, in the hands. When you no. looked at the camera, it didn't feel 20% smaller. It felt about the same. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It, it, but it, weight-wise, it's very, very similar. And I think a few people have questioned, why is it weight-wise? So there's a lot more technology packed in there. 20% smaller is supposed to be the physical size. I don't know how you'd quantify that. But anyway, it's very yeah. interesting. But also, if you think about 8K, 60 frames per second internal yeah. for the video, that means you have to have really good uh, thermals inside as well. And that would potentially add the bulk. Yeah, exactly. I like Roy's prediction that the Z version of the 200 to 500 will be a 200 to 600 PF. That would be kind of cool. Yeah, um, sounds about right. Patrick said, I sold all F and DSLR to get into the world of Z. A lot of people have, to be honest, a lot of people went that way. Uh, good morning, Bayou. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Uh, and uh, quite a few of you actually saying like David, uh, Terry, Liam, uh, Roy, 200 to 500 is fantastic value that you have yeah. one. Michael Reed said uh, his D500 and 200 to 500 are like the dream team. Mm -hmm. uh, I personally... Uh, go with John where he says the 500 PF does work very well on the FTZ. It does. It just, it really works. Well, we used on Z9. Yeah. I, I didn't notice any, you know, delay or anything. So it was, it was working great. It felt like a native lens. That's right. And I use it quite frequently on my Z6 and, and I'm very, very happy with that combination. I even use it on the Z50. Mm. <laughs> of course. Becky throws everything on Z50. I do at least once. Um, that's and Ian said 200 to 500 is great and lives on my D500. I think actually the 200 to 500 on a crop sensor camera, mm, even better, yeah, is um, is really a nice way to, to do wildlife. Actually, uh, goodness me, lots of lots more comments just piled in. Mine doesn't refresh quite at the same speed mm. as yours, it does it slightly randomly because my internet is different than yours, it is, it's true. Um, and Robert said. Where's, where's your comment? I read it a minute ago and it's vanished. Oh, yeah, 200 to 500 is great value and saves me paying for a gym membership. Yeah, the guns. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. If you've seen our Sigma 150 to 600 versus Nikon 200 to 500 video, that was, that was hard work. <laughs> Took us three days to recover. <laughs> it was a lot of walking around with very heavy lenses. But uh, when we went to Richmond, mm -hmm. I was shooting with the 500 PF and you had the 200 to 500, yes. right? And I refused to use the 200 to 500 because I just found it too heavy. Yeah, it yeah. was quite front heavy. But we were also shooting on D850s. And yes. And we went to Z6 for a while. Anyway, mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. interesting. Um, oh, hello, Ben. Ben said, long time listener of the podcast, first time in the stream. Well, welcome, welcome. Hello. A very different show to the podcast. It's <laughs> much less organized. <laughs> A lot more random. Um, okay, so here we go. We're going to do DSLR bestseller. Ooh, okay, okay. Now let's put the guesses in, okay. in the comments this below. This is a good one. So what do you think is our best-selling DSLR of last year? And that's, as I say, it's Gray's best-selling DSLR, not necessarily Nikon's best-selling yeah. DSLR. I think it would be easy. Like it's a, it's an easy one to predict. I think so too, but I was surprised. I have an overall statistic that I'm very surprised about, which I will share uh, momentarily. So, mm -hmm. have we had any guesses? I, I like I have two cameras that I can put on the list. I don't know what's the third one, so that would be interesting for me to see what which camera is the third. Okay, I think it's going to surprise everyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah okay right. guesses are coming in okay but everyone's on a 30 second lag so let's see okay. what happens okay let's see so i can see d750 d850 d5600 yeah d55 doesn't exist um d3500 like okay d70 fantastic nice okay. that probably so sold well in 2004 yes best-selling camera of 2004 and five and yeah, sure. did I get <laughs> right with the year? <laughs> it was valid. 2005, I think, was the D70 S. No. How do you remember? You were still no, at not school. It, well, because when I... <laughs> did I guess right as well? <laughs> on this one? I wasn't still at school, <laughs> but I definitely remember, I just because I'm trying to remember what um, camera my mum had at the time. Mm. And she had a secondhand D70. Mm. And that was in 2007. So I kind of worked. Oh, I see. You see, I worked okay. backwards from that. That's how I Makes remember things. Makes sense. FM3E, okay. Okay, so this is new, obviously, not secondhand. We do have secondhand statistics, which I will show you in a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and flip the screen. So number three, you can see it there. It's the D3500. Okay, I had it on my list. Yeah, that was the third best-selling camera. Okay, I had it on the second place, personally. Really? Okay. Um, I think that also was contributed to by having quite a few schools and universities purchase that one. The second place, definitely down to a university purchase. I know that for sure, because they bought a lot of these. And it was the D780. Ooh, okay. Yeah. I didn't expect that camera to be on the list. Yeah, and I'm glad it was, actually. I'm really, really glad that the mid-range DSLR was on the list. D780 doesn't get enough love, and it's a fantastic camera. So it makes me think that internet doesn't appreciate this camera, but actually people and photographers do. Yes. That's, so, a, that's a good analogy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And in number one place, I feel like we're doing like, you know, top of the pops. <laughs> <laughs> in number one place, we have the D850, which I mean, can we be yeah. surprised really? Can we, can we be yeah. surprised? Is it overheating? Or it's overheating. It? Okay. It's exploding with all the orders okay. for the D850. Makes sense. Now, an interesting statistic for you here. The D850 was not only our best-selling DSLR, it was actually shy of the Z9. Like, if we take the Z9 out of the equation, it was the best-selling camera of 2021 for us, mm. which is, I think, great. It just goes to show that people still love this camera and that DSLRs still have a huge place in the market. Yeah. Um, it, it, was, it was really interesting to me. I was very glad to see that the D850 was in the top spot. And this also says that, yes, well, um, you know, marketing and the internet and all the camera companies moved on to mirrorless systems. The photographers are still buying DSLRs. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, very much so. Um, so well done for all your guesses. Quite a lot of you got it right. I wish that the D500 had been in that top spot because I know a couple of you guessed the D500. I think partly it wasn't because we actually had some supply issues with, with the D500. Mm. We did with a lot of things, but the D500 was affected quite badly. Okay, here's an unpopular opinion. It's a very niche camera. Yeah. Aimed for very niche audience, which is very vocal, which is really good, actually. But mm -hmm. uh, it is, you know, obviously professional cameras, Priced as a professional ca uh, camera, so a lot more compared to you know other cameras and comparable with full frame releases. Yeah. So it was a very niche product aimed at very specific people who would benefit from it, but everyone else bought a full frame camera. Instead. Yeah, had gone full frame. Yeah. So. I think also being a D one hundred, two hundred, three hundred owner who then 
there was no update for the D300 yeah. for so long that I went D700 route. Mm -hmm. And that was when my venture into full frame kind of happened. I think a lot of people might have given up waiting. Mm -hmm. I remember having a D400 waiting list like shortly after the D300S came out mm -hmm. and it just sat there doing nothing mm -hmm. <laughs> for a very long yeah. time. I started with D200, I think, because yeah. uh, my college had a bunch of them, so yeah. I could borrow one. But also, you know, it makes, uh, you know, when we talk about room at Z90, that's my issue with it, that it's, again, it's a very niche camera, which would be very expensive. Yeah. And it wouldn't make sense for a lot of people because it probably would be priced very similar to Z6 or Z7. Yes. So, again, it would definitely solve the problem for a lot of professional photographers, and that's what his camera's aimed for. But in numbers, it won't sell as well as, let's say, more consumer-oriented cameras. Well, I also think that a lot of people kind of looked at, when the D500 came out, the D750 was the was the the entry level mm. at full frame kind of yeah they've discontinued g600 already it at that was, point or? well no but it wasn't as necessarily the it wasn't mm. as on an equivalent price point if you see mm -hmm. what i mean and um but and so people were doing like low light comparisons between the 750 and the 500 mm -hmm. and it was it was quite close but the it was the difference of do i want the dynamic range of the full frame sensor or do i want the crop factor of the d500 mm -hmm. and obviously the speed of it as well because the d500's buffer and speed and everything was just something something else lee says the mm. internet just doesn't appreciate nikon i yes <laughs> but i think it's changing and yeah. especially um you know like i remember we had about this time of last year we had this stream about love for zets mm. which was a very hard time where it was the kind of the lowest point of nikon appreciation tough so, tough time yeah and i think over the like 2021, it changed dramatically, not just because Nikon released good products. So that's basically changed in the second half of the year. The first yeah. half was pretty empty with releases. But also we started to get community starting to release the videos. So, you know, we have, we've got uh, Matt Irvin, Ryan Troy, um, uh, Chris Two Blue, you name it. I mean, there's so many photographers. I'm sorry if I haven't mentioned everyone. So, you know, we've got a community of people who just started to create videos about Nikon because they use Nikon. Not just because they are loyal to the brand, but they just love the equipment and they mm. start to talk about it. Mm. Before, it was all kind of Sony-based or Canon-based. And if you look, yeah, sorry for, you know, let, let me just, uh, so like, if you look at the top guys who, you know, who had million subscribers to observers, um, a lot of them were effectively became a marketing tool for lots of brands, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think because of that, a lot of people start to look for the smaller channels like us and like other Nikon channels because people were actually talking about the equipment they love. They, they didn't market things or try to sell things. So. Yeah, it's a tough one for sure because YouTube has also gone from, you know, people doing little how-to videos yeah. and stuff like that or unboxings, yeah. which was honestly one of the things that we started with was unboxing videos. Absolutely. To the place where you go for information mm -hmm. now and yet it's so difficult to know whether or not someone has just been given a load of free equipment and what often happens is with some of those bigger channels they will slag off a brand if they don't get given freebies mm. um I'm not gonna name names <laughs> of course <laughs> but but it's it's a, a fact of reality and it's like okay well it's a it's a strange place to go, which is why we like to create a safe space yeah. for Nikon lovers here. I think there's nothing nothing wrong with you know staying loyal to one brand. Obviously, sometimes Nikon make a move that maybe someone doesn't agree with or yeah. Have right a look at uh, our previous podcast. I was talking about twenty eight seventy five. I think that it was important that we raised that point yes you know what I mean doesn't mean that we're slagging them off no I, I don't think it, we need to sugarcoat things no I think we we, we should uh, talk about them as they are and obviously when the story develops we will continue to talk about those things but I think it's important to be sincere and again like I haven't mentioned Richie yeah because Richie is probably not the small channel anymore because just look at his subscribers but th the reason why he became popular is because he didn't have the fluff he was talking about the equipment and he was instead of just b being excited generally he was saying how it is and yeah. that's what people tend to trust nowadays so incredibly informative exactly. and actually providing the information that people want which i think is is a key thing really because it's very cause sometimes it's a minefield to try and find yeah. that piece of information you need uh cameras clocks and watches says i will probably stick with my dslrs as they're stored in my muscle memory and sophia says as a press photographer i shall stick with my d4s no mirrorless for me yeah. uh, you know that's fair enough but we are actually gonna go and have a look at the top selling 
Z bestsellers. Wow, doesn't show. <laughs> now we're talking about J Salas. Yeah. Let's move on to Mirror Sister. Yeah. Well, then we're going to do our top selling secondhand. Yeah. And then that's that's all my infographics. That's the thing. As a channel, especially on the news podcast, of course, we're going to talk about mirrors because mirrors is the news. Mm -hmm. DSLRs are not news, I'm afraid, unless they are. So, you know, but we talk what's on the news. Yeah. And then on our live stream, we can talk more broad things like DSLRs, like film equipments. You name it. So, you know, so like we don't, you know, we, we're not forgetting this last. No. It's just, yeah, the news podcast is for the news. Yeah. So that's what it is. Yeah. I know that some people are like, why do you talk so much about this? Because that's, that's the latest and that's what's new this yeah. particular week. Absolutely. But if Nikon do a firmware update on a DSLR, then we'll talk about that. Or if there's DSLR lenses. That's true. D6 firmware just came out. Mm -hmm. So after we had the podcast, so that's going to be on the next news. Yeah, exactly. Right. Next infographic this doesn't show up very well on my screen. But anyway, this says Z bestsellers, believe it or not. And no surprise to me, the Z50 is in third place. I'm very surprised personally. I thought it would be Z6, Z7. Right. And yeah. then, you know. No. No. Okay. You were wrong. <laughs> okay. But also, I find it interesting that in the third place, we have an entry level Z on mm -hmm. the Z side and we have an entry level DSLR on the DSLR side. So obviously those cameras are still very, very popular. Uh, so that was our third bestseller. In second place, no surprise to me, was the Z6 II. Ooh. Again, interestingly enough, D780 is a mid-level. That's true. Second place DSLR yeah. and Z6 II mid-level, like comparable cameras. Yeah. I thought Z7, Z7 II would be on the third place instead of Z50 personally, mm. but that's interesting. Okay. Yeah. And then in first place, well, there's no surprises here. It was the Z9. Um, I can't even begin to tell you how many orders we have for this camera. Is it overheating <laughs> as well? It's also overheating. I like the It's going to be on the news tomorrow. Like, <laughs> 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 I like the excitement of the Z9 being like a pow. Wow. I was well, using vintage it is, comic yeah. book. Ka-chung. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, like in the original Batman series, you yeah. know, where they did like kablam and you couldn't actually see any violence. That's right. <laughs> Gone are those days. Anyway, so that was uh, Z cameras. And I don't know if any of you were surprised by those figures. So what, Z, what do you mean Z9 pre, pretty much outsold all other Z, Z camera in um, a space of what, six weeks? Z9 outsold everything. Yeah. <laughs> but in second place, the D850, it overall of like top selling things yeah. that we sell. So you, what you're saying is if you wait with the release for five years, mm. then you're just going to sell a ton of them. Yes. Yeah, like right, Z8 is going to come out in 2025. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They'll, they'll hold on now. But <laughs> it's an interesting sort of, sort of pattern, I would say. Um, I, I love the fact that a couple of people were saying the ZFC should be number one or that they thought the ZFC would be number one. Considering that the ZFC video was a top video, obviously sparked a lot of interest. Yeah. And it's a camera that I think a lot of people, maybe not so much in the UK, but overseas would have bought directly from the Nikon store because of the different colorways mm. and things like that. That was something that we couldn't get. So as a dealer, we were maybe expecting it to reach DF levels mm. of sales, which were very good for us. No, I think it sold more than there's that there for sure, no? Yeah. Or the DF, sorry. Yeah, it yeah. did. But when it came to the DF, we had the lion's share of sales. I would oh, say. yes, yes. Because for our kind of customer base, the DF was like, wow, this is a great, it's got D4 sensor and a retro body and all the knobs and dials and I love it. Whereas um, other dealers maybe didn't quite get it. I remember when we went to a Nikon training and mm -hmm. they handed out DFs mm -hmm. and the guys from some of the other shops were like, oh, I've not seen this camera before. What is this film camera you're giving it me? Was, uh, it, it was a phenomenon. They'd never mm. taken one out of the box, whereas we'd had one on demo. I'd already written a review on it. Like, mm -hmm. it, you know, it was a very, very different experience. So the ZFC, I think we were expecting to be kind of that level of enthusiasm. But I think the sales went a lot to the Nikon store worldwide mm. uh, because of the colors. Because of the colors, yeah. Mm. Well, makes sense, makes sense. And I think that FC announcement was kind of the first wave of kind of change for Nikon in terms of how much positivity and good feedback it got and just reception overall. I think that starts it and obviously then that nine announcement just, you know, it's just the positivity went through the roof. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Richard asked if we were still selling many Z6s. I mean, to be honest, Gen 1 cameras, the Z6 and the Z7, they have slowed down, but we're going to do second hand because there is a massive second hand market now, mm. a colossal second hand market. So um, there's going to be no surprises here. 
but the top selling second hand mirrorless oh. body yeah, is that six is a mint camera <laughs> it's a mint camera okay <laughs> is is that six yes. okay that is the top selling mirrorless body it is the best value for money at this moment yeah. especially with the new film web great it's just this you know you want to get the camera now you're on the budget you want to you know have mirrorless and you can see some that's the one to get yeah exactly uh then top selling dslr body was actually also the D850. Mm, okay, now, makes sense. The interesting thing about this is that the D850 was in top place second hand and top place new in very close second, well, actually not very close second, but in joint second place, we had the D810 and the D5. Mm. And then D800s after that. I don't know, second hand's a difficult one to judge because obviously it also depends on how much we have available and how much people are selling their cameras mm. to us. But it seems like the, the upgrade process seems to occur more in the semi-professional and prosumer range than mm -hmm. in the lower end bodies. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Yes. So as I, like talking now, we currently start to see an uptick in D6s yeah. second hand because people are trading in their D6s towards that night. Yeah. So exactly. it's always kind of happens depending on the which model is released. Yeah. And we got a lot of D5s in last year. Uh, which towards D6. Yeah. yeah exactly. Uh, so that's that one. And then top selling mirrorless lens was, no surprises here, the 24 to 70 F4. Mm -hmm. We got quite a lot of those through our doors and they uh, were very good value for money. Then top selling F lens was actually joint place 70 to 200s. Mm -hmm. The all the iterations, G, VR2 and FL. Mm -hmm. FL. Exactly. And the 105 macro. Okay. Interesting. 105 macro. We got a lot of those when the, when the Z lens came out. That's true. A lot. And before that, we didn't have any. I mean, the, we, if you would get one, one a month, that would be a good thing. But then, yeah, once 105 Z came out, then we got quite a few. That's right. And uh, the slightly ironic thing is that with the 105 macros, we did a sale over Black Friday and we sold them all. <laughs> I, was, I wasn't expecting nice, to do that. It was nice. good though. Uh, so it's still a great lens for oh, anyone yeah. looking. We've got a couple now. We've bought some more in. But anyway, uh, I just thought that was interesting. And then last but not least, uh, one that's very dear to my heart, the top selling film body. Mm. Any guesses? FM3A. I'd like that to be the case, but they're like hen's teeth at the moment. Mm. So, <laughs> so, so it's a supply issue, it not is the demand. It is a supply issue, very much so. But our top selling film body in all iterations was the F3. Nice. F3, F3 HP, et cetera, et cetera. So there you go. I was, I was quite glad of that. Yeah, it's a good camera. It's a great camera. Um, right. I have to say a huge thank you to David. Thank you, David. For your contribution to the coffee fund. Um, and uh, he says, Becky and Con get lots of rest before packing and sending out all those Z9s. <laughs> I'll go hibernate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think we need to hibernate for a few weeks. Um, anyway, and uh, I don't know if anyone else found those things quite surprising, but some of those statistics, the D850 was one that really got me. I was very, very glad of yeah. that one being in top spot. It's a fantastic camera. Yeah. yeah. If you're looking for DSLR now, this is, uh, for me personally, it's the ultimate DSLR from Nikon. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That was all of my infographics for you. Oh, well, well done, Becky. Good Thank presentation. You. Thank you so much. Worked very hard on that. Uh, it was actually the looking at the statistics, which was making my brain fry. The other mm. day. <laughs> but uh, the infographic part was the fun part. So this is our last live stream of 2021. Shocking. Yeah, we will see you next year. We will. Yes, we will be back for our first live stream of the new year on the 7th of January. It's a special one. It is a special one. <laughs> no, just because. It's Orthodox Christmas, that's why. It is, yeah, exactly. And Becky's birthday. It is, yes. Um, so we will see you then. We will be uploading videos. We've got one more Nikon report to do this year. Yes. And then we'll be uploading videos throughout uh, that we're sort of putting together now and uh, trying yeah. to make sure that we don't leave you uh, completely That's true. well i thought that december we everything's going to slow down with all the news but then nikon dropped a bomb or two bombs yeah you know so and now we're busy again yeah exactly i like uh, Cade 14 said thanks for making an average year brilliant <laughs> thank you so thank much you. we try thank you for all of your wonderful contributions to the coffee fund for your amazing you. support uh, for joining us every friday for our little hour of of chatting have a very, very Merry Christmas from all of us here at Grey's and a wonderful new year. And uh, don't, uh, don't work too hard this week. <laughs> Get a rest. Yes, exactly. We will see you soon. Love bye to bye. all.